Hello, 1P, and we're continuing our conversation about polynomials today. Uh, our goal, I can multiply a monomial with a polynomial by using the distributive law. Um, so the actual title of this note is the product of a polynomial and a monomial. Now remember, a polynomial is something like this thing right here that has a whole bunch of terms strung together by addition and subtraction symbols. And a monomial is one of these things here. There's no addition or subtraction. It's a simple um, expression that has x's and y's or just x's as, in, as the case in this one. Uh, and they're strung together by multiplication. This 5 is timesing the x squared. Now remember, we don't know what x squared stands for, so we're just going to let it be x squared. If I knew what x squared stood for, I could actually stick it in and do the math. Um, but since we don't know, we're going to try and simplify so that it would make the math easier once we do know. So here's what we're going to do. Um, this says yesterday, well, whenever you happen to learn it, uh, we learned how to multiply monomials. So this is a monomial, and remember what the rule was when we multiplied monomials? The rule said that we multiply the coefficients and add up the exponents on the variables. So I'm just going to do this one again like we would have. We multiply the coefficients. So I've got a 5 and a negative 6. Together that makes negative 30. And then I have an x squared and an x to the fourth. And so if I were to write this out, I would have two x's multiplied by another four x's, which means that I have six x's in total. So this is x to the sixth if we put it back into power notation. And we could have done that much more simply if we had just um, added a 4 and a 2 together to get 6, because I've got two x's multiplied here and four x's multiplied here. So the class before that, or the lesson before that, uh, we learned the distributive law. Now do you remember the rule for the distributive law? Uh, multiply all the coefficients in the brackets by the number out front. So what we did here was we took the front number and we multiplied it into the bracket. Uh, and we got, I'm going to put the equals down here, negative 5 times negative 6 is positive 30, and then that x to the fourth didn't change. And then we do the negative 5 by the 3x cubed, and negative 5 times positive 3 is negative 15. And that x cubed is still there. Then negative 5 times negative 5, we're doing this multiplication here, is going to be positive 25, and this x doesn't change. And then lastly, negative 5 times positive 7 is negative 35. And we just multiplied this negative 5 all the way through. And be careful when you multiply by negative. Remember, multiplying by negative changes the signs. So this first term was a negative. Now the first term I'm left with is a positive. This first term was a positive, or this second term was a positive. Now it's a negative. The third term was a negative. Now it's a positive, and the last term was a positive. Now it's a negative. So multiplying through by that negative number changed the signs on us. Okay. So now what happens if we have a monomial out front, uh, such as this case right here? Well, here's our rule. Uh, just think of it as a bunch of multiplying monomial questions in a row. Multiply the front monomial by each term in the bracket. So we're going to multiply all of our monomials. I'm going to put the rule right out here. We're going to multiply them all as if we're doing a whole bunch of multiplying monomials. So we're going to take this here and multiply it by this one. And let's not even worry about these for right now. So what we're going to get is negative 5 times negative 6 is positive 30. And then x cubed times x to the fourth, uh, well, that's going to have 7x's total. Now, that was this multiplication. Now I have to do distributive law, so I have to multiply it through by that one. So we have to pay attention to it now. Um, so I'm going to multiply those together, and negative 5 times positive 3 is negative 15, and then I have 3x's out front here and 3x's in here to give me 6x's total. Uh, now the next one, let's 
reveal that again. Uh, we're going to multiply negative 5 by negative 5 to give me positive 25. And then x cubed by x is x to the fourth. And lastly, I've got this negative or positive 7 on the end and negative 5x cubed times positive 7, while well, negative 5 times positive 7 is negative 35, and then there's no x's here to multiply with this x out here, and we get x cubed. Now at this point some people get confused and say, well, um, now I can put all of those things together, and I can just figure out how many x's I have in total. Well, no you can't, because this whole string it's separated by negatives and positives. It's only when you're multiplying that you can put things together that are a little bit different. Here, this is governed by the rules of collecting like terms. And there are no like terms because this has an x cubed, this has an x to the fourth, this has an x to the sixth, and this has an x to the seventh. And I cannot put those things together because they're not the same. So that just so I'm done. I can't get any simpler than this. And I know it doesn't look too simple, but I can't get any simpler than that. So now we're going to try these. Expand and simplify if possible. So the first one, we're going to multiply the 4x by the x. And that's going to give us 4, and then an x by an x is an x squared. Then I take the 4x and multiply it by the negative 3. 4 times negative 3 is negative 12, and that x has nothing to combine with, so it's an x. Now, notice this says simplify if possible. If I can put like terms together, I should put like terms together. These are not like terms. One is an x squared, one is an x. They are not the same things. I can't put them together. This is as good as it gets. Next one, 5x squared by x squared. Well, it's going to be a 5, and then x squared by x squared. Well, I've got 2x's multiplied by 2x's means that in total I have 4x's all multiplied together. So it's x to the fourth. Then I'm going to do 5 times 2 is plus 10, and an x squared times an x means I have 3x's all multiplied together. Two here and one here to give me 3 total for that exponent. And lastly, 5x squared times negative 4. 5 times negative 4 is negative 20. That x squared has nothing to multiply with, so it stays an x squared. And once again, these are not like terms. This is x to the fourth, this is x cubed, and this is x squared. They're not the same. I cannot put them together. Now the next one, this one looks harder because there's two different sets of brackets. But really, when there's two different sets of brackets, we're just looking at two questions here. So I've got the 2x times the x is going to give me 2, and then x times x is x squared. And then the 2x times the plus 5 gives me plus 10x. Then negative 7x times x squared is going to be negative 7x cubed. And now negative 7 times 8x is going to give me negative 56. Now be careful of your signs. A negative times a positive gives me a negative, and an x times an x gives me an x squared. And then lastly, 7x times negative 2 is going to give me a positive, because I've got negative 7 times negative 2, a positive 14, and then this x has nothing to go with, so it's an x. Now here, since I've got these two different multiplications, there might be some things that I could simplify. Are there like terms? Well, remember that it's good to put it in descending powers of x, so the first thing I'm going to do is look and see if there's anything that goes with this x cubed, because that's the biggest x exponent, and there isn't. So I'm just going to put negative 7x cubed out front. Now the next one, is there anything that goes with this x squared? And I look and yeah, there is. There's that negative 56x squared and a positive 2x squared. So if I put a negative 56 with a positive 2, I get negatives, obviously, because there's far more negatives than there are positives, and it's going to be negative 54x squared, because these 2x squareds get rid of two of those x squareds. So I'm, only, I'm left with 54 negative x squareds. Now the next one is this 10x. And there's a 14x over here. So the 10x and the 14x, they're both positives. So if I put 10x's with 14x's, I get 24x's. 
and we're done. I've put everything together that I can. This is as simple as it gets. I can't put it together any further because I'm not multiplying anymore. I have the additions and subtractions in the middle. Find the area of the given rectangle. Well, how do we find the area of a rectangle? Length times width. Well, and here's our length and here's our width, so I just have to multiply them together. Anytime you use a formula, area equals length times width, put down the formula you're using. So we go 5x times 4x minus 1. And now we're just going to multiply it. 5 times 4 is 20, x times x is x squared, and then 5x times negative 1 is negative 5x. I cannot put those together. I cannot say that this is 15x. There's a lot of people would want to do that. They would want to take the 20 and subtract the 5, and they would want to take 2x's and subtract 1x's. It doesn't work that way. We are governed by the laws of um, common factor, or just not common factors, common uh, terms. And there is nothing common about these two things. So this is as simple as it gets. This is a formula for finding the area of this particular rectangle. And lastly, find the area of the shaded region. Okay, this one's a little bit rough uh, because we've got two things to calculate here. So let's go the area of the big space. And then we're going to subtract the area of the little. And that's going to give us the shaded, because if I find this whole area, and then I take away this little area in here, that's going to give me the area of the green, which is what I'm being asked to find. So we're going to do that. Here's how we're going to write it down. So if I want the area of the big, it's going to be length times width, which is 5x times 4x minus 1. And we're going to subtract the area of the little, which will be 2x times 2x plus 3. And now this is just multiplying as we did before. 5 times 4 is 20. x times x is x squared. 5x times negative 1 is negative 5x. Negative 2 times 2 is negative 4. x by x is x squared. And then we go for the next one, negative 2 times 3 is negative 6, and there's no x to multiply that, so that's just x. Now we need to simplify if we can, uh, and we can. Look here, I've got 20x squareds and negative 4x squareds. So if I have 20 and then a negative 4, I actually have 16 positive x squareds, because these four negatives cancel out four of those positives. Uh, and the other thing I have here is an negative 5x and a negative 6x. No cancelling goes on here. I've got a negative 5 and someone gives me 6 negatives, so that means that I have a total of 11 negatives. And this is as good as it gets. This is as simple as it gets. I cannot put these two things together because they are not like terms. And that brings us to the end of this video.